Hey guys, this is Rob John Webb here for Waxless Music and what is stopping you from releasing your music part three? Now, I've been going over recently about why people prevent from releasing their own music through fear and through critics and through various things. And today's short video is basically the, the third chapter in the blog that I wrote on the Waxless blog um, the other week. And it says, you produce too many styles. Now, that can cripple an artist. Um, but it can also evolve one as well. Um, it's something that, you know, a lot of, all, most artists will go through, through their musical journey, you know, they'll try one thing one minute and another the next, you know, two completely different sides of the fence. Um, I've done it countless times myself and many established artists have done it and they've fell flat on their face and they've landed, some of them have hit the floor running with it. So, um, with so much music being available these days and never before, you know, it's easy to be influenced by a lot of different things, you know. In the, but back in the 90s, for example, when I was making music, you know, house music, vocal house music was vocal house music and that was it. Drum and bass was drum and bass and that was it. You know, the, the two never really collided in the early days. Obviously, they melted together in a kind of a two-step garagey way eventually. But, um, you know, in those days, a, a genre was a genre. But nowadays, you know, you can make an album these days and really express yourself and have a techno track on there and have an ambient track and have a vocal house track and have a acoustic track, whatever you want to do, you know. Um, but it can be frustrating as an artist, and I've felt this myself, where one week you're making disco house, which is what I do, and then the week later I'm making some moody techno sort of record. And you want to release it, but you're afraid because you don't want to alienate people. Um, you know, from, from the disco side of things, for example, or from whatever genre you normally produce. Um, so, you know, but at the same time, don't be afraid to stretch yourself because there are artists out there, particularly in dance music, that do, you know, spread themselves out and they do do a little bit of moody techno and a little bit of disco and whatever, you know. You know, as the old saying goes, you know, without disco, there would be no techno. So, you know, if you can combine the two, that's, you know, perfectly fine. But if you look at artists you know, throughout throughout history, throughout musical history, particularly David Bowie, for example. I know he was a, a, a god, but he started out in the 60s making all kinds of weird music, and then he made a record about the Laughing Gnome, which is really weird. If you don't want to believe me, Google David Bowie, the Laughing Gnome. Very bizarre song. And next minute is Ziggy Stardust, and then next minute he's in a soul funk mode with his, you know, working with Ruth Vandross. And then the next minute is in Berlin making cutting-edge electronic music with, with Eno, and then by the 80s, he's a massive pop star. And then by the 90s, he's producing drum and bass, you know. Um, so don't be afraid to, to, you know, push the boundaries as such, you know. Um, another person that obviously didn't, didn't, broke out into lots of different fields, but stuck to the same kind of thing, and that was Prince. You know, he did loads of pop funk and did loads of cool disco -y funk, and he did all sorts of stuff, soundtracks, whatever. Um, they weren't afraid to, to push the boundaries as such. So... Basically, you know, take that risk and try releasing a different style because you never know, it could be the making of you. And if it doesn't work out, then you can always revert back to the genre that you do. It's okay to go a little bit left field. It's okay to just slide across to the other side a bit and try something different. And it's good for your artist, artistic, um, you know, development anyway, because you can't do the same thing forever and ever, you know, unless you're the Rolling Stones and you keep banging out the same uh, tracks on stage 60 years later. But, you know... If you're an electronic artist, you, you've, there's so many avenues to grow now. And it's and it, it, what's the worst that could happen? You know, if you've got to look at it like that, what is the worst that could happen? You could get noticed by a whole load of new fans. And if the old fans say that you suck, just remember that you make music for yourself and not for others. And it's a bonus that anyone else likes you anyway. Yeah. So, you know, don't just do that kind of thing. Just don't don't hold. Um, don't hold the fear of, oh, well, what if? The, the guys that I'm peers with, you know, the, the guys in my circle are going to say it's not it's not this, it's not that, you know, um, and I get that. Um, so just do what feels right at the moment. You know, you should be able to just try anything within the moment and not worry what some stranger on YouTube is going to write or what one of your peers is going to say, you know, in the comments box. It, it, six months from now, it's not going to matter. You're going to be doing another thing anyway. So just just get on with it. Just just don't hold back. Don't hold back because it's a bit techno-y or it's a little bit hard. You know, obviously, if you was a disco artist and then you release something like Euphoric Trance, then yes, obviously, you would need a name change and you would need to go and do a whole different project on that. But if you want to develop the one name you've got, then it's okay to go a little bit moody, a little bit deep house, a little bit, you know, whatever, techno-y. 
or whatever genre you produce. For example, if you produce drum and bass, um, I'm going out on a whim here, um, and you produce kind of real hard drum and bass, and you want to go a little bit more liquid and a little bit more, you know, uh, intelligent and moody and ambient, then so be it. Don't worry, you know, explore. Explore the different variations of, of the, your, your genre. Um, but in terms of what I do in Disco House and stuff, you've got your edits, you've got your slow-mo, you've got your chuggy stuff, you've got your... You've got your Italo disco, you've got your high energy disco, you've got your pumping disco, you've got your French disco, you've got your, you know, your American New York disco. You've got all these different sort of genres and you can throw them all together and it's OK. And then all of a sudden you can go over to Detroit and do a little bit of techno and come back to New York and do your more disco stuff. It doesn't matter. Don't be afraid to step out of your comfort zone and produce a different style. If you produce too many styles, have a few different names and have a few different projects. That's also a good thing. I do that as well. So step out of your comfort zone sometimes, release something a little bit off your normal um, pathway and see what happens. Who knows? It could be the making of you. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you soon.